Hello guys, today we continue apologetics is attorney. So in the last video we in the part where uh where um, uh after uh after I press the bracelet and I have to looking for something to perceive. Okay, low three. So much, Mr. Bruchel. Uh, uh, yeah, well, a man can have his plans, you know. It's more than that when Mr. Misham's talent was mentioned. He suddenly began to sweat buckets. Uh, you're hiding something about his talent? Uh, what? Da, da, that's ridiculous. Evidence time. And so where Mr. Misham drew talent lay. It just so happen I have evidence showing the talent mentioned in the letter. Present. This painting was found in Mr. Misham's studio. There are two tro ah. There are two problems with this painting. The first is it wasn't painted by Mr. Misham. The second is that there was another painting in the studio. Which looked exactly like this one, except it was only half done. Then we have a letter discussing a payment of one... I doubt it was one hundred. I think I was saying it wrong. I think it was one thousand. I hope I'm not wrong saying it. Saying it. Which guess a certain business operation. The business of making forgeries. Um. That is all, Your Honor. Everyone, please, everyone, can I keep this private, please? This is my story, my scoop. Forgery. That's a serious crime. Your mission is known as an artist these days. But there was rumor he dab dabbled in, the, in another kind of art until a few years ago. But there were rumors he dabbled in another kind of art until a few years back. Another art meaning forgery. The mission was talented, alright? Talented at making precise detail fix. A fact that certain criminal elements were quick to discover. Criminal elements? What? You can seriously be talking about? Exactly. I'm talking about forging evidence. The rumor started circulating seven years ago. Se seven years ago? So are we to understand that this letter this payment of 1000 was for save 3 exactly for the evidence needs tidy profit and score order 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 why it's like our victim was living a double life ha <laughs> this is my chance so the victim had ties to the three criminal world right he could have had he could have had plenty of enemies, we know nothing. Objection! This is my first time hearing of this criminal world. We certainly found no criminal connection when we conducted our crime investigation. Objection! But how do you explain all this money? You have to admit there's a possibility of some illegal activity here. Objection! But there is no proof tying this letter to our case. Our case was and remained simple from the beginning. Only the defendant could have poisoned that mom that night. And you, of course. Hey, hey, hey. The only thing I poison is my pen when I'm writing reviews. Mr. 
after Bucha, your testimony to this point has been quite unre unreliable. It doesn't speak well of your reporting acumen. What are you talking about? My journalism is ro rock solid. Journalism is so solid you could stand an elephant on it. End quote. In any case, let's hear a summarized recap of your testimony. If we can ascertain the situation in the studio from the recap, trial is over. Apollo, what are you talking about? The cross-examination show Mr. Wilshire didn't have a reason or the means to poison him. As long as there's no other suspects. Then the killer had to be Vera, nurse what? Save. 3. This next testimony is our last chance. Mr. Bushell, your testimony, please. The interview. A recap. The only other person in the studio that night was the defendant. It was Vera who poured the coffee. She admitted as much herself. The only thing that touched Bruce's lips during the interview was that mark. And nothing left the studio after he died. Nothing. Clearly, the only one who poisoned who could have poisoned him was his daughter. A nice testimony clears something and without room for doubt. Oh, shocks. You really think so? I believe this clarifies the situation that night. Very well, Mr. Justice. You may begin your final cross examination. R right. I still have one trump card left to play. And I won't let this trial end until I use it. The interview a recap. Safe. Three. The only other person in the studio that night was the defendant, Press. Hold it! But that doesn't prove Vera poison it. Objection! How many times have you heard that one? Here forehead. The poison which it tricked him via that coffee mug. And from where did that coffee from? Not to beat a dead horse again and again, but perhaps you could feel a sin. I'm on it, you need a horse beat, I'm your man. It was Vera who poured the coffee, she admitted as much herself, press. Hold it. And you witnesses her pouring the coffee? Of course I didn't witness it when she came in with that tray. The coffee was already poured and it's steaming. And let's not forget the defendant had admitted to pouring the coffee herself. I heard her statement, I poured, I served, and I killed. Whoa, what? <laughs> that last part was just a little joke. I don't think I'm going to get anywhere with this coffee mug. I need to find another weak spot in this case. The only thing that touched his lips during the interview was that mug. Press. You're sure about that? Well, to be really, really precise, I was busy gobbling mint candies the whole time. One of the candies might have been poisoned. Objection! Yet at the time of the auto scene of fresh pregnancy, mint filled the room. And no mint residue was found. It was a long shot anyway. Don't tell me you're still trying to prove this. You think the victim ate, drank, or otherwise ingested something other than coffee? Hmm, well, Mr. Justice, if you have some proof, the possibility is there. You can feel it, just maybe not to prove it, not yet. And possibility isn't going to cut it, not now. Mr. Michelle ingested that poison via a root other than coffee? Not yet. It can be- What? I just said not yet, not it, not, not it can be proven. I do believe our little forehead is growing up. Pity. We like the rest. Your full forehead best. <sighs> Another hole in this case that needs plugging before I can prove anything. Five, three. But first thing first, I better uncover a weak spot before I try to strike again. On with the cross examination. And nothing left that studio after he died. Nothing press. Not one thing, you sure? Yep, sure as sure. Yes, yep, sure as sure can be. 
Well, with one exception. One exception? What? Generally, Spark Bushel does interview Leaf Studio. And what? <laughs> Come on! It's a joke, get it? Not funny, I know, but still. It's something leave the studio, not night. Why does that sound familiar? Why have I heard that something like that before? Now that the proven Aurinus is a comedian of sorts, I like to turn our. I like to turn to our. The fact is turning before returning to the testimony. Do you have any idea what if anything might have left the studio night night? Hmm. Let's say four. Do you have I need any idea what if some anything might have left the studio that night? That night. Hmm. Something. I think one thing might very well have left the studio that night. Actually, a certain something that has vanished from the crime scene. By which you mean? Something other than our witness? Of course! Don't tell me, Paramisham! Believe me, any comics relief I may provide is, entire, is entirely un unintentional. Then, let's see what you've got for us, Mr. Justice. Well, this thing wasn't at the, crime of, at the scene of the crime, so I can show you. But I do have evidence that show you how it could have been taken from the scene. Only link between that studio and the outside world. A letterbox. What did Mr. Bushel just tell us? When he entered the studio on the night of the murder, the victim had just finished writing a letter. Yeah, I said that, and yeah, it was true. Furthermore, he went on to tell us that he put the letter in a yellow envelope and put it in the letterbox. Ah, but that very same very box was empty. In other words. That night, the yellow envelope disappeared. Objection! Ah, yes. Joking. So, an envelope has disappeared from the scene of the crime. Of course, this changes nothing. Huh? He has a point, Mr. Justice. What we're trying to figure out here is how the poison got into Mr. Misham. It's really important that this envelope, the witness says he saw disappeared. Well, if it did disappear, then something did leave studio that night. That seemed very important to me. Very well then, the witness will add, add this to, the, to his testimony. You got it. I still think this fails to change anything here for her. I won't be so sure. <laughs> a letter disappeared from the crime scene later that night. From, eh, a letter disappeared from the crime scene that night. This is exactly the opening I've been looking for. Save 3. A letter was put in the post from the studio, but I hardly think I made a stress. Nothing could be more serious than an envelope disappearing from that studio. And you were hiding that fact from us. Uh, yes, well, actually. I don't argue with the possibility that the letter disappeared from, the, from that studio. But here for him is a fair much more serious question before us. Right, how huh? Mr. Michel was poisoned, I know. Well, Mr. Michel's testimony has changed, which means the fact of the case has too. And what he's told us means something entirely different now. I'm starting to think. Let's keep thinking, Apollo. Clearly, the only one who could have poisoned him was his daughter, Press. He said clearly as though it was, it were obvious. But this claim that the defendant poisoned the victim is merely conjecture. Ah yes, well you see, in my business it's all about making the most ridiculous thing sound right. A bad habit, I know. 
Yes, well, uh, actually, I guess this is more a case of ridiculous journalism sounds wrong and quote. The court is forced to agree with you. Please refrain from wild conjecture. Understand not and clear. If only I could believe that. Save 3. What do you think, Apollo? Everything he's saying seems so not fraud. Well, that's kind of what you want from a testimony, really. I need to keep my eye on what matters. How and why and was Domitian killed? Well, of course, that's not going to change. But if that coffee didn't kill him, I need to find what did and prove it. Understand what we need, ya? Yeah? Proof, hair for head, not possibilities. Of course, and Professor Kutter gave in. I hope you understand. I'm ready to give you that proof. Oh, what did you say? I have proof of the disappearing envelope. Safe three. I saw him writing a letter. I did. Which was picked up by the bellman, I assume? Of course, which means that envelope had a stem on it. A stem? Ah! As we all know, stems come with dried glue on the back. In order to use the glue, you have to wet it by licking the stem. Objection! <laughs> no one worth talking to actually lick stems in this day and age. Even if you wanted to talk to him, you could Save. Three. He's dead after all. Objection! Okay, so he leaked the last step. But wait, how does that explain that to clean on the dream of the coffee mug? Objection! If he leaked the back of a poison stem, the poison would get on his tongue, yes? What will then happen if he put the coffee mug to his mouth? Hmm? Those traces on the mug weren't the killer's doing, it was the other way around. What? The coffee mug didn't poison Mr. Misham. Mr. Misham poisoned the coffee mug himself. Order, order, order. But, but that doesn't. doesn't it? Does it? Recall if you would. I took. Atrocine, atrocine, atrocine is a slow acting poison, yes. The poison entered his body when he put the stem on that envelope. But his time wasn't up until the very moment he touched his lip to that coffee of Joe. Safe. Okay, that's it for today's guys. Bye-bye.